Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and get started this afternoon. I'm sure we'll have a few folks that'll be joining us here, but I want to be uh, respectful of those folks uh, that, that took the time to come on. Thank you uh, very much. You see the opening slide here. This is part of, uh, you, you're uh, on this call today because you're part of our BPAA Managed States team. So uh, out of our office here in uh, Arlington, Texas at the International Bowling Campus, uh, we uh, provide management services for the 16 state associations that you see uh, listed there, of which uh, your center is probably one of those groups and, and we're proud to uh, be a part of that. And as part of this Zoom educational series, uh, we're starting to put together some programs to hopefully share some information with you. And, and today is all about uh, the maintenance side, specifically uh, lane maintenance. And I know with the states that are with us today, uh, some of you are already open. You've been open maybe for seven to 10 days, maybe even a couple of weeks, some of you. Some of you are just getting the green light and gonna be opening this weekend. And unfortunately, I know there's some with this that you're still not exactly sure when you're gonna be given the green light to get started, but that day, that day is coming and it will come hopefully sooner than, uh, than later. But nonetheless, wherever you are in that opening strategy and wherever you are in that opening process, there are some key things that we want to share with you. So we brought in some, some experts there, the folks that can help uh, help that deliver that. Um, so today uh, with us, we brought in, uh, next slide here. Sorry about that. My, uh, Slide froze there. But we br brought in uh, Gus Falgan from uh, Kegel, who's the vice president of uh, sales there. Uh, he's the vice president of sales there. He's a lifer in industry. He also has uh, one of his teammates, Doug Dukes, who's uh, with him as well, who's a technical sales specialist. And uh, he's going to be joining the, the call there. So uh, just a couple of um, housekeeping items before we get uh, started, and I'm going to stop my share screen here just for a second. If you are uh, new to Zoom for whatever reason, maybe this is the first time you've been on it or you're not familiar with the platform, um, down at the bottom, there is a, uh, you hover over the bottom screen there, you'll see some icons pop up. And there's one that says chat. If you click on that chat button, it will give you the opportunity to uh, type in a question. Some folks uh, maybe aren't as eager to talk to the group there, but if you'd like to uh, type in a question why uh, Gus or Doug is speaking, we certainly will make sure that uh, that gets uh, answered. And then also, uh, if you'd rather ask the question yourself, we'll have an opportunity, since we do have a large group, we have everybody on mute to start with. Uh, when we're done, we certainly will give you the opportunity to unmute yourself and ask that question, but you don't have to wait. If you'd like, go ahead and type that question in at any time. Also, since we have a, a, such a large group, I know we have folks, some joining on, on your phone, your iPad, your laptop, your, your computer, whatever that device is, uh, all of you are gonna be able to see a different amount of people on the screen. So in the upper right-hand section, if you hover over the upper right-hand section, you'll see there's an icon where you can do what's called speaker view. And if you click on that speaker view, it will only show the person that's speaking, which the, almost all the time from here going forward, will be Gus and Doug from the, uh, fr from the Kegel team there. Uh, again, because we have such a large uh, group of folks on there. So what I'd like to do now is, is turn it over to our, our guests. First of all, we've got a lot of great partners in our industry and certainly we count right. Kegel at the top of that list. They are great partners of uh, the bowling industry, great partners of BPAA. And uh, when the questions started to come from some of you from around the country, we thought it'd be best just to bring in the experts, and that's really what we've done with, uh, with Gus and, and Doug. So I, I'm gonna turn it over to them. And then again, if you have a question, don't wait, type that in, or, you can, or if you'd like, we'll do some questions at the end and make sure that uh, we don't want you leaving today without uh, making sure that those questions are answered. So uh, Gus, Doug, we're gonna turn it over to, to you folks. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Of course, thank you Bart and Chris and BPAA for all the great stuff they, they do for the industry and, and provide for, for all of the centers. Uh, welcome in some interesting times we all live in now. Um, today we really wanted to highlight as centers are coming back online, if you will, through the reopening process. Um, we're starting to get more calls of, you know, my machine might not be doing what it did before I put it away for three months, you know. so. We really want to give you some of the, the top things to look for that's really as much preventive, you know, so you can prevent something maybe happening when you get going 
than it really is to find a problem, if you will. So, um, you know, we would just want to give you some of that information. That way you can give it to, I know some mechanics are on here, certainly uh, mechanics or, or uh, proprietors and, and managers can give this information as well. Uh, we do have some of this information on the website. Uh, so you can go there and get, you know, a lot of this information um, as you reopen as well. So uh, as Mark said, with me today is Doug Dukes. He is our uh, technical sales specialist. Uh, like me, we travel around the world. Uh, not now at the moment, of course, but uh, in the past, we'll usually spend about 200 to 230 days on the on the road visiting bowling centers and, and seeing bowling all over the world. So um, very lucky to be fortunate to be able to do that. Um, one of the, the first questions we've, we've gotten some calls on or concerns is when it comes to your chemicals that you're using, conditioner, cleaner, um, whatever products those might be. Um, you know, they've been sitting on your shelf for a couple months, three, four months, and you know, are they still good? You know, how long are they good for? Um, and typically, uh, most conditioners will have a shelf life of uh, up to 18 months. So really, you shouldn't have much concern there as far as if your product is still good um, from that standpoint. So you should be okay from, from that. Um, the cleaner side, basically our recommendation is really to mix up fresh. You, if you had some already pre-mixed, use that maybe some other general part cleaning or something like that, but mix up a fresh, you know, batch for your lane machine when you start to get that machine, you know, running, you know, on the lanes. So chemical wise, you should be good. One thing to do um, when you take that jug out for the first time out of the box or the crate, give it a good shake because as it is sitting on that shelf for a period of time, there are additives and UV additives that will fall out of that. So you just want to give that a nice shake, get everything, you know, back in liquid form. Um, some conditioners will, will see that a little bit more than others. So just as a, a preventive, give it a good shake, which you would do in most cases, no matter what, anytime you would grab a, a new jug, you know, of conditioner out of your, uh, off your shelves. So really no one should have too much concern um, out of that. If you are concerned, at least on our products, on every box, there is a batch date. So you can see exactly when it was made. So you'll know how fresh it was. And again, if you fall within that 18 month period, um, you should have really no, no issues or, or concerns from, from there. So chemicals should be good. Um, from lane machines, really, um, you know, they've been sitting for three, four months now. Um, some centers were having their mechanics go in periodically. If you had a battery machine, plugging it in, putting it on charge. Um, if you've been completely closed and now you're going from zero to a hundred um, and you have a battery machine, you certainly want to get that plugged in. Make sure your charger is charging those batteries properly so that again, when you get it on the lanes, that machine is ready, you know, up and ready and charged and, and ready to function. Um, the other side from the chemical side is hopefully um, you did drain all your tanks in the machine before you had to close your doors. But if not, not the end of the world. But I would definitely make sure you, you empty and flush those tanks. And again, put fresh product in both your conditioner and your cleaner side. Um, and if you happen to have a flex lane machine that mixes the cleaner for you, same thing, make sure you got fresh product in there, but you also have your cleaner pumps. We have an auxiliary pump, which is your concentrate and your water pump. Over time, that tubing from just sitting there in that pump might create a, a flat spot or have a hard time getting that, that pump through the system again. So that is certainly an area, if you have that, you wanna look at, or at least maybe take the tubing out, kind of give it a little massage and and put it back into that uh, cleaner pump. Uh, that'll ensure that you will get the cleaner and everything on your lanes. Um, also, something we always recommend, no matter if you've been closed or what, is uh, process verification. And what that means is we can prove that the chemicals we're putting on the lane, uh, those volumes of your pattern, 
cleaner volume and all of that are, are doing what it did when you put your machine away. So that's a process that will also help you get your liquids through your lines, your filters, make sure you don't have any clogged filters from sitting there. And you can do all this in the mechanic shop or on the approach before you ever actually go to run your lane machine. So basically you can ensure that you're putting out the exact same pattern, chemical volumes as you did before, you know, the unfortunate period of, of having to, you know, shut down your bowling centers for a little while. So those, that's a, an important area. Um, one of the other real things we like to do is go through what we call our test input and outputs. Um, and that basically, you can go through all your functions, test your motors, make sure that everything is functioning properly um, on the bench or in your shop, again, before we go out and all of a sudden your lane machine throws up an error or it doesn't run. Um, and what that also does is goes through to ensure your relays are functioning. You have relays in your PLC and in other areas. And typically from sitting for that long, they might lock up and then you're going to get an error or one of your uh, motors or something might not function properly. So you want to go through, again, good way to do that is in your shop or on the, the, the approach really want to go through and get all those functions, you know, functioning. If your lane machine checks out, everything looks good. Now you're, you're ready to physically get that machine running, you know, up and down the lane. Uh, if uh, you did not strip all your lanes before you closed, which hopefully many of you did just so you didn't have all that conditioner sitting on the lane for a couple months, but uh, if you did not, not the end of the world, but we definitely recommend doing a test clean or a clean only function across all your lanes first. That'll, again, one, make sure your squeegees, your vacuum motors, all of that is functioning, but also that your lane is getting clean and you won't have residual residue that will cause you problems that one, you know, strip might not get it off the lane. In most cases, it will but sometimes there's always that scenario where you might leave some residue. So certainly, you know, do a, do a test clean across the center, uh, as well as, you know, dust your caps and gutters. That's always an area that's, you know, collects a lot of dust. All that dust and everything will get sucked up into your, into the lane, especially if the lane had not been stripped, you're going to have a lot of dirt and dust from, from the air. Uh, you don't want all that stuff getting into your, your lane machine and your buffer brush, your buffer, you know, um, vacuum motor area, a lot of dirt. Um, one of the other areas that you can do just to double check, you know, it's always better to know than hope, if, if you will, as we say. Um, you know, go in there and just make sure your squeegee crush is, is good. Make sure your cushion roller, which is a very important part of your cleaning section um, hasn't developed a flat spot because if you do have a flat spot in there that can create some issues um, in the cleaning process and 80 percent of most lane conditioning problems that we see or calls are is because the lane's not getting clean as it should so when you're reapplying the conditioner it's not playing or laying on the lane if you will as well as it should or is intended to. So, you know, you can go in there when you're doing your input output test and you can check those adjustments of the crush of your squeegee, make sure the, you know, the crush of the buffer brush, transfer brush are all good in those areas because you, uh, like anything, reopening, you know, the concerns of our customers. We want to make sure that, you know, they're getting the best possible conditions that um, you can give them and, and put on the lanes, you know? So take a look at that area, really, you know, do a good once over, if you will, on your machine. Uh, if all of those check out, you've done your test clean, you know, run a couple lanes. You're gonna need a couple lanes to get oil back into the buffer brush, back into your transfer brush, or back into your whatever conditioning system, you know, in your particular lane machine you're using, get that, you know, going again, get that on the lane, visually look to see if the pattern looks like it did before, before the shutdown. And if it all looks good and you're happy with that, you know, go ahead and, and run the rest of your house. And hopefully by doing these preventive 
steps or you know uh, these this process before you just go out and start running your lanes um, you won't have an intermittent issue or all of a sudden the lane just doesn't stop on lane 10 and you've got all these different errors uh, that could pop up so those are really the the high areas and some of the calls we've gotten so far have been um, clogged filters because they've sat for a while um, the other common one like I talked about are relays that are, are stuck you know so you got to get those unstuck to get those you know your lane machines functioning so really those are really kind of been the highest kind of you know tech calls we've gotten so far and as more and more centers come online and um you know more centers do definitely reopen and are running their equipment um you know we'll be able to to find those you know best practices or or you know uh you know help solve those problems that people have but really wanted to give you those important areas today so that hopefully you won't experience or you know, not that we don't want to hear you or, you know, have you give us a call, but certainly we want to make sure that if you can prevent something or not have to call us because you caught a problem prior to having to call us, then, you know, that's really what our objective um, from today was. Um, anything you can think of, Doug, maybe that, that goes a little deeper than what I've kind of touched on so no, far? I mean around the office like you said one of the biggest calls that we get is obviously you know on the flex machines those that haven't taken off their cleaner um, concentrate tubing and and it's very simple to just unlatch it take it massage it it'll just from all that pressure create that flat spot um, and, and usually if you run the pump in your test output output for about 15 20 seconds after you massage it you know everything will flow right through um, and like you touched on you know the other biggest call i think that i've heard about is, is cushion rollers from being stored that long and not releasing the tension off that roller, um, you know, it does create a flat spot. Uh, obviously, all the things that you talked about, you know, we have a reopening document. Um, we have it on our website. And uh, if, if you can't find it or don't have access to that, if you give us a call, you know, we'd be more than happy to send it out to you by email. Well, good. Um, so, yeah, you know, again, hopefully uh, these tips or things will, will be good for your lane maintenance section of your machine and, and that part. Um, some of the other things that we've addressed really that um, are, are new concerns to a certain degree as we move forward in bowling and reopening uh, are house falls mm -hmm. and rental shoes concerns, you know, shared items, if you will, in the bowling center from, you know, what we would consider open play or, or more of a recreational bowler that's coming in to use typically those items because they necessarily don't have their own balls or shoes. So uh, really wanted to look at options for the bowling center to address those. As you open, you can have some, some you know, solutions to maybe some of the problems that are post, you know, where we're at right now in the current, current state of the world. Um, and one of those really is a product, what we call Micro Striker. And um, it really people would be like, you know, not sure why Kegel has a, a cleaner like this or where it came from. But what uh, many customers might not know is we actually have household products in the marketplace outside of bowling that we've actually been manufacturing for pet supplies and, and things for well over 10 years now. Um, so it's a natural thing. Um, we, we clean lane oil per se for a living. So cleaning a bowling ball where people maybe be more concerned now of you know putting their their hands in that bowling ball are those holes clean you know those are, are legitimate concerns we feel people are going to have coming back to the bowling center so um yeah micro striker is a, is a great product i'm gonna let doug kind of go further and give you a little more of the background of, of micro striker but really is an awesome way to disinfect, sanitize those bowling, you know, those house bowling balls. Yeah, so as Gus said, um, we've had a chemical division, you know, for household for some time now. Um, this was already in the process as a disinfectant. It's already up for CDC approval, actually. Um, so it's pretty neat. You know, you'll get a, a case, as you can see on your screen. The starter pack will come with two uh, misting spray bottles, which are pretty, pretty nice. These are the continuous mist sprayers that once you prime them, uh, you know, they kind of extend spray a little bit longer. 
um, and then it'll come with 50 tablets. Um, that bottle is 24 ounces. You can put one tablet in a 24 ounce bottle. Uh, it takes about two minutes to dissolve, uh, four minutes to dissolve fully, and you're ready to go. Uh, the cool thing about Micro Striker is it's active chlorine. Um, you know, a lot of people, and, and we've done a lot of advertising about this, um, they ask, you know, why, why not just use alcohol? Um, alcohol, sometimes it, it's a great cleaner, um, but in order to kill certain viruses and certain bacteria and things like that, it needs to wet itself for at least four to, to 10 minutes. Um, and most of the time it will evaporate too quickly. You know, same thing, why wouldn't I use a bleach mixture or something along those lines? Yeah. And we don't do that because bleach is very harmful. So you can't take bleach and spray it on your bar returns or on your furniture, it's gonna discolor them, um, it'll make stainless steel rust, et cetera. Uh, with the active chlorine, basically what we can do, um, and we have some videos on YouTube about this, you know, you can go through, spray all your house balls, um, rotate them over 180 degrees, spray them again, um, make sure that you get inside the holes in about four to 10 minutes, it's dry. It dries with no residue and it dries what we call inert. So there's nothing harmful left behind. Your customers can go right in um, afterwards. If you have groups on the lanes, um, you can disinfect the entire bowlers area. So basically when that group comes out, you know, your front desk staff, your porters, whoever it may be, they can go up, they can spray your furniture, your, you know, your seats, your ball returns, the balls that are left on the ball racks, um, spray it on a rag and, and wipe down your, uh, obviously your consoles. Yeah. Scoring console. Exactly. So, you know, it becomes very easy to use and, it, and it's a very good, obviously, perception today is reality. Um, so when people see you going through and sanitizing and cleaning or asking what it is, um, you know, you can tell them that it's a house ball cleaner, a general cleaner and a sanitizer. We're making the bowling center safe for you. And one of the, the, the feedback so far of the centers that have used it and are using it now in their process, and there's many different processes. Every bowling center yeah. kind of has their own unique way. Uh, but the biggest comment that we've been getting back is the ease of use mm -hmm. and really the benefit of being able to spray all your house balls maybe in the morning or at night and not having to go physically wipe everything down. You can just spray those, let it dry, and boom. You've disinfected and sanitized those without having someone to sit there for hours wiping the ball. And again, we clean lane oil. So this actually is developed to get through the lane oil and not only clean that, but actually, again, sanitize and disinfect those bowling balls, which, again, we think and kind of gotten some feedback that that certainly is a, a topic or an area that, you know, some of the open play or casual bowlers uh, have some concern. So um, if you need more information, certainly please feel free to check us out on the website. Um, you know, and again, talk about the shared items. One of the other areas are our rental shoes. Yep. Um, it certainly is a, a concern of, of people and coming in and using, you know, rental shoes from from you know multiple uses, even even though you can spray them and some of that. Um, so Bowling Buddies is a great product. It's a at the end of the day, it's a fantastic option, or it takes away the concern of a bowler that might not come bowling because they might not want to use rental shoes. So it's just a great option, so that if a bowler has an objection, you can be I have another solution to that. Don't worry, use this. Um, so it's really, really, you know, um, great option for, for people coming in, you know, that have those concerns. I mean, um, I'll let you kind of touch on a little bit more of, of, our, of our, you know, shoe cover bowling buddies. Sure, definitely. Um, I mean, obviously what we're looking at here is, is for the customer to be safe and comfortable. Um, so the safety side comes if they have concerns about rental shoes, um, you know, from other people having their feet in them, even if you do spray them. And the comfort size comes from the fact that they're wearing the street shoes that they walked in with. Um, they're only made for single session. So we're, the patent actually says five games um, is all that they're good for. I know some people had concerns about those being reusable and things like that, but they are a completely disposable product. Um, you know, and once again, as Gus said, it's, a, it's an alternative to a rental shoe. Um, we're not trying to take away from the rental shoe business, but we also don't want anybody to lose a customer because they don't want to use their rental shoes and there's no alternative there. Absolutely. Um, the, the other great thing with them from what we've seen is parties and groups. So it's very easy. Uh, you know, if a group of 30 comes in, 
you can turn over very quickly because you're not worried about shoe sizes or things like that. It's small, medium, large, extra large. Yep. What size do you need? Here it is. Now you can go to your lane. Um, with birthday parties, you know, it's great, especially with kids. All you say is, are you above a size two or below a size two most of the time? Um, and, and you can get those people out on the lane very quickly. Um, so the way Bowling Buddies works, um, basically, you know, you're going to get a package. It's going to have a pair in it. Um, you put it over your existing shoes. And it actually does have um, a slide um, and a heel to it. So, uh, you know, it's going to act just like a regular rental shoe would. Um, the front of the shoe is actually two ply, uh, which is what prevents the cover from actually going over top of your shoes or bunching up or things like that. Um, we've seen people bowl in, in a multitude of things from, you know, their work boots to flip flops down here in Florida, um, you know, tennis shoes. And, and we've heard rumors about some other stuff such as, actually high heels from a couple people not that we would recommend that but they say that it, it does work so um, it's an alternative for whatever they may be may be wearing when they come in your center so yeah it's uh again you know really just trying to you know provide solutions and you know some of the problems or new things that we might not have ever thought of before uh it certainly is a a new day and age we're living through and uh you know, uh, certainly uh, we're always here to, to answer questions or help you in any way, you know, we can. Um, we're fortunate. Uh, we're, we're back in our building and working every day. Uh, so that's always a good feeling to, to be at. And we wish everyone uh, a successful reopen. Uh, hopefully you're already reopened and that's going well and starting to see results and and get that business, you know, up and flowing again. Uh, I know Bart said a few on here might not be open. So certainly we wish, you know, you all the luck and, uh, you know, bowling is a, an unbelievable industry. Uh, fortunate to be in this industry and the love and the passion that everyone has for bowling is, is just amazing. Um, you know, everyone we get to, you know, talk to or do a seminar for or anything. So, uh, you know, certainly thank you again, Bart and everyone for, for joining us today. Again, we have a lot of that information uh, in our YouTube channel. Um, we're really putting a lot of content on there. Uh, you can certainly see some videos that we've done. Uh, as Doug said, also that reopening document that I talked about that kind of walks through the steps that I, I spoke about. You can find that on our website as well. So uh, we have a lot of, you know, additional information that, you know, we can probably talk about or oh, yeah. sit here for hours and hours, but certainly uh, we know everyone's time is valuable. So, um, Bart, I'll open it up if we had any questions or any, any of the chats or anyone wants to ask us questions. We're ready, buddy. No, great. Well, great. Well, thank you. And I know we have some. We'll get to that. Uh, I, I, I want to go back because I want to make sure I showed your glamour shot to everybody. I made a little <laughs> I don't know about yeah. that. Why, why'd you have to pick the one where I, you know? I wanted to show everybody what you looked like pre-pandemic when you had a razor and your <laughs> major haircut and, and you, you know, you were clean shaven. I apologize. I had a little uh, IT snafu there for you. No, you're good, my man. No, I'll, I'll get rid of that there. So, hey, uh, I know we had a couple of questions. I want to get those, but let me uh, make mention just one thing. You know, from BBA's perspective, as, as member centers, our job is to provide you solutions. We have a great partner in Kegel. We've got great other resources. Uh, from our perspective, we don't care where you get it, how you get it. You just got to get it, right? You've got to get a solution because I, I hate using the term new normal, but we're under some different operating practices now. We're going to have to do things differently than we, we ever have uh, on there. Um, so I'm going to show one more thing, and then we're going to jump into questions. Um, as uh, uh, Gus and Doug mentioned, they've got a lot of incredible resources on the Kegel website, which I've been to, and it's great. But I also want to just make mention of um, one thing here, if we can, if I can get this to do this right, we'll be good. Um, I know uh, many of you, if you are a manager or a uh, proprietor, you probably have been here before, but for some of our mechanical staff and lane folks, maybe not, this is the BPAA Reopening Resource Center. You can get to it through bpa.com and also through bowlinguniversity.net. It's got a tremendous amount of resources on bowling, staffing, F&B attractions, marketing, many of the resources, stuff that uh, Gus and Doug talked about and others, and then uh, some other things as well. But I just want to make sure you know that's there. 
I know Kegel has some great resources and other partners great resources. Uh, what, you know, if you need the, the, the slip on rental shoes, the micro stri striker, all, all great stuff uh, that we want to make sure that this is about, you know, I, I'm a believer in our industry that all boats benefit from rising tide. So you just got to get the stuff. You got to have it. You know, you've got a lot of great partners, including Kegels at the, uh, the top of the list there. So um, guys, I'm going to go through a couple of questions here that were typed in and then okay. we'll make sure that uh, we'll give everyone an opportunity to um, ask them if they do. So Scott had a question for uh, you too. This says, what happens to conditioner once it's, once it's past its shelf life? Does it break down? Uh, I mean, all conditioners will be a little different depending on the additives that are in there. But basically what happens is um, your components that you would expect to be stable, uh, provide durability, um, consistency, uh, as some of those parts fall away from shelf life, you're going to lose those basic components of the conditioner. It'll still go on the lane. You can still bowl with it, but you might notice a different ball reaction or where you might have gotten more longevity out of, you know, how many games before a re-oil, you would start to see that conditioner deteriorate more. Um, so again, some are well within that 18 months, some even more. It really depends on what's what's in there, but in most cases, the way we produce conditioner on demand, if you will, and get them through the supply chain, you know, um, very rarely do we walk across a distributor that would have, you know, conditioners much more than a year, uh, you know, so in most cases, that's why I say, really, it shouldn't be much of a concern for, for anyone, but if you are creeping up into that 18 plus months, um, just keep an eye on it, you know, make sure that you're not seeing some separation in the jug or you're not getting the conditioner to hold up or play like it was, you know, pre maybe that part. But just because it's 18 months doesn't mean that it, you got to throw it away or all of a sudden, you know, panic. Uh, but it is certainly a red light to keep, a, keep an eye on. So hopefully that answers the question. But thank you, uh, Scott. Great, great question there. And I'd like to layer one thing on there from an operating perspective there, since we have some of our uh, maintenance mechanical uh, folks on there, and, and I, I, I love them all. Uh, you know, there's that great debate between the front and the back, right, about uh, should we condition, should we not condition? It's not a league night. Do I have to, you know, condition them today? Uh, you know, whatever your personal policies are, your policies, you know, should respect that. But let me share this with you. This is what we've learned from centers that have opened around the country. And it's been universal almost in every center that has opened up, even the more entertainment focused centers. And if you think about this, it makes kind of intuitive sense. The first guest to come back to your bowling center will be the league guest. And there's a reason for that. They're the most passionate about your product. They know you the best, they, they trust you the most, and uh, they have their own equipment. So uh, you wanna start off on the right foot with these folks. So. Uh, whatever your decision is, it is, but I would encourage you to treat opening day like opening league day because those league guests are going to be lined up out the door. They're going to want to bowl. And they're not going to want to bowl on uh, something that's not conducive to their normal league condition, whatever that is there. So just from an operating practice, just know that the casual guest is the, the one of the last guests to come back and your league guests who are the most loyal are the first guests to come back. Um, I had a couple of other questions, and, and, and while I certainly want to be sensitive, and, and this is not about a, a sales pitch by any means, but I want to share these since they, they came up. Uh, Billy asked if uh, the, the Bowling Buddies were currently in stock. We have um, very little stock, unfortunately, at, at this moment, um, but we uh, do have more coming. Uh, we are hoping to have those, it looks like, sometime, you know, in July. Um, we're doing our best to to, to get them in stock. Uh, so, you know, if you're certainly interested, yeah, certainly make sure you reach out to the distributor, uh, get those. Um, but yeah, we hope to have stock here very, very soon. Okay. And uh, again, this was a question, maybe this might be for, for you, Doug. Uh, there's a question from Michael. It asked, is the micro striker okay for food surfaces? Um, currently, right now, it's under the CDC approval process, so it hasn't been approved um, by the CDC or the FDA. 
Um, so I, I can't tell you that it's okay for food surfaces now. Um, once we get those approvals and they go through, which hopefully will be in the next couple months, um, that may change and it will change on the label as well, but currently not at this time. Okay. And then uh, there was one other in regards to the, uh, the Bowling Buddies, and that is, uh, could, is it possible either through Kegel or a local distributor to get a sample for those that may not be familiar with the product? Um, yeah, just uh, contact us directly here at Kegel. Yep. Okay. You can go on, uh, if you go on the website and you go to the Bowling Buddies section, um, there will be a contact form there. It'll ask you to fill out your information and those forms actually go to me. So uh, you'll definitely hear back and you can put in the comment section what you're looking for. Okay, great. That's good feedback there. So um, that is the questions that we had uh, typed in that, that I can see there. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, if somebody that is on the call here today has a question like to ask about the lane conditioning or Kegel products or, or anything, just any products. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, um, Again, this is about experts from Kegel that are going to help you with, with reopening your center, regardless of the, of the product category. Uh, in the lower left hand uh, of your screen, there's a little, you'll see a little uh, microphone icon that's red with a line through it. If you click on that, that'll unmute you and you can ask a quest, uh, question to uh, uh, Gus. Gus there. Yeah, yeah, Gus, this is uh, Jeff Romano, Saranac Lanes. Hi. The micro striker, is it a cleaner or a disinfector? It's up for CDC approval now. So um, it, it does kill microbes. We've done that in our lab and we're going through the approval process now. But uh, as far as having it on the label or anything like that, per the CDC, we can't put that out there until it meets the approval process through them. Correct. Good. Thank you for that question. Thank you. Uh, anyone else you have any questions while we got the, uh, got the experts here? And since we have so many people, I can't tell if someone's trying to talk. Just uh, click your uh, mute button in the lower left, and that'll take you off mute there. Hey, uh, Tony LaPola. We're from Yorkville, New York. My, my question, concern is, is that I run my machine about every three days, and I do four lanes. Is that recommended? No, that, that should be fine. Um, just the fact that you're running the machine is great. Um, as long as you don't see any problems, you know, running those four lanes, um, you know, every other day or, or every third day is actually a great practice to have. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Excellent. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Tony. That's a great question. Hey, Doug, it's Jeff again. Um, I'm finding a little uh, oil on the right side of the machine. Is that because it's pressure building up in there, not running it every day? Um, what type of machine do you have there? I have the um, custodian. So if you have a little bit of oil, did you drain your tanks before you put the machine away? No, we didn't. They just laid them down and that was it. But when I lifted it up, I've been oiling once a week and it's starting to calm down a little. So a couple places that could come from, um, especially where your, your filter goes in, which is the main feed for your oil line. Um, you know, if you got a seal that's a little bad there, um, you may not see that throughout the time when you're using the machine every day. But you know, even if it's one drip every every two or three hours, if you're only running once a week, then that'll definitely build up and show up. Um, the other place to look on that machine around your pulse suppression tubing and where, um, you know, your fittings go up to your pressure gauge and things like that. Um, that's another place to look. Also, depending on how they store the machine, um, if you have manual vent valves on it, um, you can definitely, sometimes those valves will go bad over time. And, and once again, it's not something you would notice because the machine is usually not sitting for a week at a time. So those are a couple areas to look at. Um, if you don't find anything there, um, two good tips. Um, one is obviously you can give us a call and we can walk you through some other options. Um, and the second thing that I like is obviously every oil has UV additive in it. Um, so a lot of times I have a really good one, but you can go pick up a cheap UV light from your auto parts store. If you're trying to find a leak like that, um, you know, kind of dim your lights down and shine that UV light around your lane machine and you can see where every little bit of oil is. accumulates. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have a question for uh, Gus or Doug while we have them? Yeah, I've got a question. Is there uh, any any danger of like the internal battery dying? I've, I you know, have an old uh, Phoenix B model WIC machine 
and it hasn't been plugged in since middle of March. Um, is there any any risk of that happening? Is it a concern? I'm, I'm going to yeah. get it going again next week here. So yeah, I mean, I would try to get it plugged in as as soon as you can. Um, in most cases, you probably should be okay, but it'll also depend on how old the battery yeah. is in that PLC. So if you've never replaced the battery in the PLC and that thing's 15 mm -hmm. years old there is probably a good chance that your memory is gone next time you plug in that machine. Yeah, that's right. So I would, if you can, you know, get that plugged in as soon as you can. Um, but then if you have lost your memory, then, you know, give us a call and we'll have to walk you through and how to reload that, that software into the PLC. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, great questions there. Anybody else while we got the experts here? Hey guys, my name's Richard from Lassard Lanes Down, Connecticut. When it shut down, I was using a uh, Phoenix Model B silver box. When my lead bullers come back, we're gonna be running a uh, new to us K Walker. So uh, what kind of differences should my lead bullers expect going from that machine to the new K Walker? Um, they can definitely see some, uh, a few differences. Um, most of them are going to be good though. Uh, I'll tell you, if you want, do you have a, a starting pattern that you're going to use with that? Were you going to use, um, you know, something that you found online or have you contacted us already? Uh, I haven't contacted you. Uh, I did have a uh, pattern from someone else locally that okay. I was tweaking before, uh, we shut down. I was putting it out on Saturdays and had some league bowlers blowing on it, but I was able to get a lot of feedback before we had to shut down completely. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, with those two machines, um, you know, some of the patterns, numbers might look the same, but speeds and the nuances, because you are going to have, those do have two separate um, transfer, transfer systems. So how that, what that means is how that oil <laughs> in that program, she gets to the lane, is going to vary quite a bit between the two systems. So um, not that that's a bad thing, they just both have their, their, you know, uh, what they do differently. So uh, I would definitely, you know, typically going from a B to a, a walker, I think they may say they're a little tighter. Yeah. You're going to get more conditioner down lane typically because that system delays the, the, the smoothness or the taper a little bit more than the old silver rollers would uh, or even the wiper bars. So you will get a, a different front to back taper. So they're going to probably say they're a lot tighter than what they were used to, um, which is, uh, I say, an easy adjustment, but and it can be adjusted simply by what you're using your speeds of the machine uh, to do that with. So, uh, you know, if they're happy with kind of what you have, that's great. Um, otherwise, you can always send, you know, us or Doug your pattern and we can certainly, you know, do a conversion basically. It would be the exact same pattern structure if you like it and it was good. And we can just take your numbers and kind of put them in the new way so that you get the same results between the two systems. Thanks, guys. Sure. You're welcome. Yeah. Sounds like Richard has a new toy to play with post-pandemic. That's awesome. Great, thanks. Awesome. So uh, anyone else have anything else before we uh, wrap up for this afternoon? There's some great, uh, great questions and uh, great, uh, great insight from Gus and, and Doug there. Questions, yeah. Andrew. Go ahead, sir. West Side Lanes, Lake of the Ozarks. Um, I've got a Phoenix B also. When I'm doing the 20 mile maintenance, um, I'm having a hard time getting the cleaning spray tips to spray in. Is there, do you recommend it soaking those overnight and anything? I've been trying club soda, but it helps, but doesn't really work. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple things to look at there. Um, you can obviously, if, if you have a buildup in them, soak them in something like CLR. Um, a lot of times that'll, that'll clear things up. Um, but what you're really looking at, there, there's a couple unfortunate things that could happen with that. Um, obviously you have that valve or, or ball that's inside your, um, screen filter. Um, and, and it has to build up a certain amount of pressure to be able to allow that cleaner to go through. Um, sometimes when we see those not functioning properly, 
Um, it can be an indication that the cleaner pump's starting to lose some of its pressure as well. Um, so, you know, if you were fine before you did anything, then I wouldn't say it's that, but if not, I would definitely take a look under that cleaner pump as well and make sure there's nothing leaking out of your diaphragm or, or anything along those lines. Um, but we typically recommend, it's not really, you know, um, uh, that expensive. Most of the time when we do annual maintenance, we'll go ahead and, and replace those check valves. And then we know that we're starting off, you know, fresh and, and good to go. And a lot of times, you know, you'll have that little star, uh, you know, washer on top of that check valve. And a lot of times that spring, the ball will get stuck in the bottom yeah. or into that spring. So you can actually take a small screwdriver, pop that off the top, and then, you know, pull the spring and the ball out, and make sure they're not stuck together. And then you can put that back together. So usually, especially if it's been sitting Same. for a while, and it, you know, it's used to, you know, firing away every day, and then it dries and kind of just sits there, um, the odds are maybe you have some check valves there where that ball and spring are stuck. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Awesome. Another great question. Thank you, Andrew. Anyone else? We'll do a last call for question here. Okay. Super. So, hey, gang, thank, thanks uh, with that in mind. So, uh, Gus, Doug, thank you again for uh, joining us, taking time out of your busy schedule. To all of you that uh, joined today, thank you for uh, taking time out of your, your, your schedule there. Uh, we got lots of great information on bp.com. The Kegel team has lots of great information on uh, kegel.com. Um, you know, we're here to help and assist in any way. To make sure that uh, whether you've been open for a few days or you're getting ready to open, Make sure that you know we're safe, secure, and, and, and ready to roll. So everybody stay safe. If you have any questions, you can certainly email and follow up with us later. Uh, wish everyone the best there. Uh, stay safe. Thank, Thank you, you, Bart. Very much. Thank you, everyone, Thank for you. joining us. Have a great night. Thank you. Hey, Bart, and just wanted to remind everybody we're going to be doing this again next Thursday at the same time. And we have Robert Winkler from Stars and Strikes talking about leagues. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Great reminder. So for those of you that are interested in learning about uh, uh, the formation of leagues, we'll have that available there. And again, you must register. So please make sure you register because we're limited. Stay safe, everybody. Bye.